<coughs> Today is Quinquagesima Sunday. This coming Wednesday is Ash Wednesday and the beginning of the Lenten fast. You can find more information on the fast laws on the website. So let us prepare and make this a very good Lent. Make this the best Lent of our life. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Thus speaks the blind man in today's gospel. And he perseveres calling out to Jesus until Jesus has him brought near. And then Jesus asks the blind man what he wants. The blind man answers, Lord, that I may see. Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has made you whole. Physical blindness is easy for God to cure. There is another blindness that is difficult for God to cure because it requires our cooperation. That is spiritual blindness. Lord, that I may see. We live in an instant world. We want a quick fix, a simple cure for all of our diseases. We want to take two pills and all is well. A chronic condition cannot be easily cured and spiritual blindness is a chronic condition that we acquire over years, nay decades, of wrong living, wrong thinking. When we go to the doctor with a chronic ailment, he will prescribe lifestyle changes, which often include a special diet to be observed for a month, months, or possibly even for the rest of our lives. He may also prescribe some medicines to heal the damage we have done by our wrong living. And yes, often the cause of our diseases is our own wrong living, whether it's done knowingly or unknowingly. The saints tell us that we must obey these prescriptions of our doctor under penalty of sin. If this is true in material matters, how much more so in spiritual? And the lifestyle changes may appear radical at first, but they are necessary. Two words almost a quarter of a century ago changed my life. The doctor said to me, don't sit. This was necessary for my back trouble. And if I do have to sit for an extended period of time, I must take other precautions. But basically the doctor told me I must be either laying down or standing up 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the rest of my life. Let us get back to our problem spiritual blindness. Lent is a good time to cure spiritual blindness because it is a time of mortification. Mortification of our bodily senses is a necessary part of the cure for spiritual blindness. We remove the disease of spiritual blindness by removing the cause. A daily rosary won't cure spiritual blindness, although it can help. Last week, I recommend an hour a day in spiritual exercises during Lent, and this will help as well, but it is not enough. We have to remove the cause of our spiritual blindness. The average person is devoting five hours a day to something that is destroying their minds, hearts, and souls. And in order to save our soul, we have to remove this obstacle to salvation. Just as two words changed my life a quarter of a century ago. Three words can change yours today. Give up television. Last week I asked you to keep track of how you used your time. If you are average, you spend 30 hours in front of the television, or one-sixth of your time. How much time did you spend praying? probably four to six hours in last week, unless you began early on my request for an hour a day. By this we are telling God that television is six times more important to us than He is. What foolishness! We must make a change and we must make it during this Lent. We cannot put it off. God designed our mind to take in and love good, especially spiritual good. We can find nothing spiritually good on television and precious little on the computer. <clears throat> and neither media is designed to help us to take in and ponder such good. This is why Jesus commands us in these days especially to read and understand. In reading, we can go at our own pace. 
When we find a profound point, we can stop to ponder it and understand it. Let us return to the television and spiritual blindness. How does spiritual blindness flow from the television? Ask yourself a question. Could I sit five hours staring at a blank wall? And yet, we spend five hours every day staring at an illuminated piece of glass or plastic. What's the difference? Staring at the wall, we have to think. I mean, let's face it, a wall is boring. <laughs> Whereas staring at the TV, the tink TV thinks for us. Do I really want someone else thinking for me? Now let us look at the saints. They could spend five hours sitting in front of the tabernacle in utter silence, and what would they ask for? More time. They spent their time thinking on heavenly things. Why won't we? We can, but we will not, which is why we are spiritually blind. We certainly have the time, for all we need to do is unplug the TV and spend our time in contemplation. However, let us get a bit more realistic on accomplishing this task of overcoming our spiritual blindness. In our Lenten instruction, we give a simple plan to eliminate television by mid-Lent. It's a simple plan. Read it. Follow it. You'll get there. And all we are recommending is that one of these recaptured hours be spent in spiritual pursuits. The other four can be spent in anything from taking a nap, to getting to know our family better, to reading a good book, even a secular one. By the middle of Lent, we will have prepared an instruction on the moderate use of television after Lent is over for those who choose not to eliminate it entirely from their lives. So let us ask God today for this whole Lent to help us cure our spiritual blindness, to purify our heart, mind, and soul, that we can become saints. And let us pray for this great grace, because God can cure our spiritual blindness if only we cooperate with Him. So, dear Lord, help me. I'm asking you today, help me cure my spiritual blindness.